was reading your book last uh, night and also watching a video this morning and this this theme kept coming up uh, about the seeking dynamic uh, being really searching for happiness in the future and you you said something that is that was just magnificent uh, that really seeking for happiness in the future is a rejection of life that's very powerful yeah. it's awesome but it made this question arise about uh, what about creative urge like artists are compelled yeah. to to, create. to to create and and so on is this the same thing or is no it, no is there so the, the thing about the body the human body is the human body is designed to survive so it's designed to move forward it's always designed to and this is where it all got confused so it's designed to make sure it has enough food to make sure it has enough warmth and it has the ability to imagine so it can imagine future whereas my dog can't if I give her actually she can a bit she'll bury food and stuff I find it all over the house <laughs> <laughs> gross places, a moldy bone, I'm like, oh, thanks, Lucy. But mostly she can't think about these things. Whereas with the human brain, we've got a lot better um, ability to perceive time and to be able to store away things for survival. And so because we've got this ability to seek contentment, to, to seek contentment for the body in the future, we then believe that our spiritual happiness, our contentment, our sense of being comes from the future as well. So the natural bod the natural functioning of the of thinking is to think about the future and to analyze the past. So that's what it does, is it moves in that direction. But we then think that contentment, that that peace comes from the future. But peace, you can't really call it a name, but freedom boundlessness is what is it's nothing to do with the movement of the body towards the future so the natural momentum of the human body is to look to the future but that doesn't give you anything it doesn't give you anything what gives you um, well it gives you practical things but the freedom that everyone looks for is always what is but I see creativity as part of that momentum of what the body does so it's going to strive to create things for the future and if you have a creative um, body-mind structure as opposed to a building one so if you've got a builder's stru building structure you're a builder or you're a doctor then that's what the movement of the body would do if the, cre if the body is a creative one as in creating music or art or lately I've been writing again then there will be a momentum to do that but you won't get anything more by completing it it's just what the body does, but you won't get anything more by the completion of it. It will be pleasurable, it will be nice. It's nice when the body can act out what, what the body's good at and what brings the most pleasure for the body. So it's nice if you're a musician to be able to create music and to look for the future for potential recordings or, our, or performances. But that won't give you anything more than sitting right here. True freedom is this. This is true freedom. But the nature of the body is always to move forward. Like obviously, like the nature of the human body is to is to be able to think and move forward and survive. You understand what I mean by move forward? Yes. Like you don't sit in rotting food. The food gets cleaned away. And but really it's not moving forward because the true nature of everything is total stillness. So it's always happening now. But in spirituality, because of all the deconditioning um, things that are talked about, we kind of begin to get this assumption that in some way the human body will stop being a human body, if you know what I mean. Like in some way it will overcome its conditioning and it will start acting as if it's not. But this is a really important part, but not really uh, important in the sense of where I see a lot of people suffering is they believe that they're going to be the body's going to become non-human and, <laughs> and it's like the human part so the human thinks the human's going to have all types of emotions the human I don't mean to be nasty about humans but it's just the way we sit up the human body 
will always look after itself first. And I don't mean to, it will, it will look after um, its companions. It will look after them because we're also programmed to, um, to live in a group. So actually we will pick the group of, uh, over us. But that too is a selfish thing in a way because that's what's the most, the, it's, it's always, the human always goes towards pleasure, the body always goes towards pleasure and in that circumstance the protection of its surroundings and the humans around it is the most pleasurable, brings the most pleasure even though the person wouldn't think like that. So the body has all these ways and it's all set up to survive. The human body is about survival and it's about making sure it survives for the future and that's its number one. And, and it's not that that's a nasty or mean thing, it's the same with the plant. And, and, exactly. and it's so beautiful what happens in the plant. So, it's, so say a flower, over, in order for it to survive, it has to produce really bright flowers to attract the most amount of insects. So you get these amazing array of flowers. Like it's not a negative thing that the human does that, but it seems negative because we see it as things that have hurt us in the past. We think humans have treated me badly and they've thought about themselves first. But actually what's created suffering and that agony is the belief that you exist. My dog is not offended at all that I eat my food first before her and always feed this body first and she's not allowed to go near the fridge and I get to go near the fridge. She doesn't see that as in any way hurtful upon her. It's simply the way it is. This body and my boyfriend's body gets the number one picking. <laughs> we get served first and she's second. But she doesn't take it personally, but the human sees that and thinks, I wasn't loved enough, I wasn't good enough. And therefore the human has to stop being human. Others have to stop seeking pleasure first because they've hurt me. And so they, they then form these weird relationships where, with people where you make lies about, I'll always think, you, think of you first, I'll always do things for you, and I'm not selfish, and, I'm, and it's really not true. The body's always set up to move forward, and it's a really beautiful thing. But the reason why most humans want to reject it is because they've taken that personally. They've taken it as a rejection on them. Them, them looking after themselves is a rejection on me. And then they suffer. But it's really beautiful what comes out of the human. If it wasn't for this ability to move forward, there wouldn't be all these things that we've created. I mean, look at the computer. It's amazing. And that will still happen if the illusion of self disappears, but it just will no longer be for someone. The production might not be as quick, but it will still happen. The human will still be creative. It will still want to create. It will still want to move forward. It's <laughs> There will still be music, there will still be art, but just maybe on a slower scale. Maybe humans won't find it so important to make it now and within the next five minutes and growth. But they will, they will always create, no matter what. That's what this instrument does, the brain. It loves to imagine and think of all different things. I wonder if, could I do, will it grow better if, I'm just looking at a plant, that's what I'm saying there. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thanks. Lovely to speak with you again. Lovely to speak with you as well. <laughs>